All right. Well, it is noon, so I think we'll get started and allow other people to trickle in as we go. So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us via Zoom today. To make this session as beneficial as possible, we encourage everyone to enable their camera, but please keep your microphones muted. All questions should be submitted via the chat, and I will make sure they get answered at the end of the session. My name is Kristen Toby, and I'm the Director of Student Activities at Hobart and William Smith. I've been at the colleges for 16 years and have the pleasure of working with students through the various ways that they become involved on our campus. I'll likely be working with you through the next four years as I oversee orientation, 100 plus student clubs, and several of the activities that happen on campus. I'm joined today by several current students who will be sharing their experiences with you. Before I give a quick rundown on student activities, I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves. So let's start with Josh. Hi everybody, my name is Josh Barnes. Um, I'm the president uh, and a coach at CrossFit HWS. Um, I'm a senior and I am a double major in biology and political science. Um, another awesome thing that I've done on campus is I have participated in the study abroad program. Uh, I studied abroad in Australia and um, had some amazing experiences there. Was able to um, do some scuba diving on the Great Barrier Reef and everything. Um, and I'm definitely really excited to be here with everybody today uh, and to talk more about CrossFit HWS. Cool. Hi everyone, I'm Ryan Klimkevich. I am a senior, I am a major in music and a minor in Russian area studies. Uh, I currently serve as the chief of Hobart and William Smith EMS, a uh, position I've held for the past two, uh, two years. Um, and just like Josh, another great experience I was able to do was study abroad, where I went to Stockholm, Sweden, uh, and just had an incredible time and I'm excited to be here today. All right, my name is Yalamark. I am a rising senior, current junior at the colleges, majoring in international relations with a double minor in economics and Africana studies. I um, was just studying abroad in uh, the south of France, but due to Corona came back. Um, on campus, I'm involved in Sankofa, which is the college's black student union. I'm co-president of that. And I'm also co-president of Model African Union, which is like Model United Nations, but centered towards Africa and Africa's issues. So yeah, I'm super excited to be here today and talk about those two clubs. Wonderful. And I think Dante just joined us. So Dante, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Sorry, what was that? Sorry, Dante. Thanks for joining us. Could you just go ahead and introduce yourself? Oh yeah, sorry about that. So hey everyone, uh, my name is Dante. I'm a junior at Hobart and William Smith Colleges. I'm a computer science major with a Asian studies minor. And I am currently the president of Escape Gaming Club and as well as um, our esports um, program here on campus. Awesome, thank you so much. So I really want all of the students who have joined us today to hear from our students at HWS. But before we do that, I just wanna give you a few highlights um, about our office student activities that all of our clubs and organizations work so closely with. So our office offers over 100 clubs and organizations. Um, you know, when you join us on campus, we have an involvement expo where you can come out and meet all of the club leaders, ask questions, find clubs that you might be interested in, or maybe something that you've never done before and you just want to give it a try. It's a great opportunity to um, kind of expand your interest and also expand your involvement and get to know more people on campus. Another great opportunity is that if we don't have the exact club for you, you can start your own club. So it's a really easy process. We have new clubs proposed each week at our student government meetings and our office in student activities can help you through the process. For campus events, so we have tons of activities and ways to get involved on campus. So even if you're not funneling through a club, you might just want to join us at events that are happening on campus. Some of those include the road trip series that gets you off campus to different destinations. Our campus activities board is a group of students who plan lots of exciting 
um, events throughout the school year on the weekends specifically and in, in the evening. We also have Greek life, homecoming and family weekend, senior week, and so much more that our office offers throughout the school year. So I really encourage you to find all of those campus activities and get involved um, and just join us at events and see you know, what might pique your interest. Advice on how to get involved. So again, the Involvement Expo happens at the beginning of each semester. That's a fantastic way just to connect with lots of people from various organizations. Um, otherwise, you know, orientation is a great time too. So your orientation leaders uh, will be welcoming you to campus at the end of August. They're all excited to share with you their experiences on campus, how they became involved, where their interests lie, and they really want to find out, you know, what you're interested in. They want to help you find that connection point so that you feel at home at HWS too. And that's really what this conversation is about today with our current student leaders who have sort of found their, found their spot here at HWS through their club or organization or specific interest. So back to the students, let's hear from them. Let's start with the Alum work. You have leadership roles on both Model African Union and Sankofa. Can you talk to us a little bit about both of those organizations and how you found them and got involved? Absolutely, yeah. So um, I actually kind of got really lucky with both of them because I kind of just like fell into knowing about them, um, which is I think shows like the beauty of like a small liberal arts college because everyone sort of like knows everyone and everyone knows about what's going on on campus. So the likelihood of your friend recommending you to a great club that they know is like pretty high, especially when you first come onto campus. So when I first came on, um, one of my friends was actually getting ready to go to the Nationals Conference in DC that happens every single year with Model African Union. So Model AU is like pretty much every Model UN that's across the nation, but just centered towards Africa's issues. So what's really cool is that they have an annual um, Model AU conference in DC, which is actually where I'm from, um, at Howard University. And so people from all around the country um, in their respective Model AUs get together and sort of do a mock United Nations conference. And so I had done Model UN here and there, but I was a part of debate in high school and didn't really, it was kind of like rusty on, in Model UN. So I was like, I don't know if it's gonna be for me. Um, but then my friend was like, you know what? We have an open spot, just go, just do it. And so I did my research on the country and wrote up my resolution and I went and I ended up loving it. Um, there were kids from like Addis Ababa University University in Ethiopia and like just all around the world and you just met different people who were just as passionate as you were about IR and, and politics and drafting policy everything like that so it was, it was really cool to be like in that space and in that environment so that's kind of how I got involved and then when I came back onto campus um, sort of moved up from there became um, and then when the people who led it left, they were like, well, it seems like you're really passionate. Do you want to run for co-president? And I did. And so I had a really good time um, being co-president last year and hopefully this next year if I get elected. Um, so that's Mala AU. Um, and then Sankofa is one of the many culture clubs that we have on campus that are affinity groups. So we have Sankofa, LAO, which is the Latin American organization, and CSA, which is the Caribbean Student Association, as well as SASA, which is South American Student Association and the International Student Association as well. So there are different affinity clubs on campus. And I got involved in Sankofa because of one of my friends as well. When I, um, in my first year dorm, she knocked on my door and was like, there's a Sankofa meeting. Um, it's the Black Student Union on campus. Would you like to come with me? And I was like, yeah, sure, I would love to. And so I went and met a wonderful community of individuals who were really passionate about social justice issues and every week had different conversational topics, but also hosted events on campus and um, teamed up with faculty to have different like academic events as well where we celebrated Black History Month and did a lot of really amazing fun things and then also connected with the Boys and Girls Club in the, in the community and did community service work. So I just, I kind of stumbled into both clubs through my friends, but it was really cool because you get to learn about, you know, different communities on campus and be able to like plan events and feel really connected to the greater Geneva community as well. That's terrific. Thank you. And it really goes to show that just by tagging along to a meeting, you become involved and work your way up and eventually become a co-president. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Very cool. So Ryan, can you talk to us a little bit about EMS and your responsibilities on campus? Yeah, for sure. Thanks. 
Uh, so Hobart and William Smith EMS is our school's dedicated uh, emergency medical services first response uh, organization. Uh, we're all New York State EMT basics. Uh, we go through a state class and we all get accredited. We respond to emergencies on campus 24 seven throughout the academic year. Um, so if it's three in the morning or three in the afternoon, we're the ones who get to show up and help out. Uh, we respond to a wide range of, of incidents ranging from your, your more serious incidents to I, I hit my head because I hit my head on my lofted bed and I need an ice pack. And we'll come and help you out. Uh, that's what we're here for. Um, I, I joined HWS EMS uh, my freshman year and took the class my freshman spring. Um, I, I knew going into college that this was something I was interested in. Uh, I'm also a member of my local volunteer fire department. So that was sort of my entryway into the world of first response. Um, we average roughly 250 calls per year. Uh, so not incredibly busy, but you'll definitely run a fair amount of calls if you join with us. Um, and one of the coolest things about it is we sort of draw on a variety of experiences and a variety of individuals to join our service. Most people think that we're the pre-med kids or that we're the science-based individuals, but I'm a music major and I've been lucky enough to serve as chief of the agency. Uh, so we really do have a variety of, of different majors and people with different backgrounds. Um, the school pays for the class, which is huge. Um, it's usually like $1,500 to do it and the school pays for it in return you uh, serve the agency for the rest of your college time. You can go abroad and everything like that. You can still do whatever you'd like to do on campus within our agency. And probably the coolest fact about us is that we're 100% student run and student led and we're 100% volunteer. Uh, so while um, we do report to the school because we are working for the school, uh, it's more of a report to them and sort of let them know what's happening. Uh, my officer staff and myself makes all the decisions for the agency um, and we are very proud of our student initiative and our, our student uh, leadership. Awesome, thank you for sharing that. So Dante, the Escape Club um, is also now a theme house on campus and that's relatively new. Can you talk to us about how it came to be and what the club does on campus? Yeah, so Escape, um is uh i guess you could call it like me, one of me and my friends babies from freshman year um so we were the original founders and creators of the escape gaming club and what we originally wanted was just some place where people who literally wanted to just stay in on a thursday uh, friday night or like a saturday night and didn't want to you know go have fun that night and just you know kind of stay in and play video games all night uh and that was really our our original goal and and we kind of just like it started off with just asking friends, hey, can we borrow your PS4 or whatever? Um, and it kind of just grew into what it is now. Uh, so Escape is essentially uh, once a month, we hold um, big gaming nights where we order food, we bring our consoles, and we have pretty much every single popular game, I would say, on console. Um, and then we come and set up in one of the rooms that has about eight TVs and two projector screens. And so we set up our VR, we have a ton of food, um, we decorate the room, and we really just try and give an environment for students to be able to just hang out and play video games all night. Uh, we say we go from 7 to 10 p.m., but we've had nights where we've asked Campus Safety, hey, can we stay a little bit later tonight? And they will let us stay until 1 in the morning just playing video games. Um, so Eastgate has definitely progressed into um, a really good time for me and my friends. Um, and I think it's a really awesome uh, environment to be in because it's whatever we wanted it to be. It wasn't kind of like a uh, pre-directed idea from this university or anything like that. It was literally just a group of friends. We were literally like, oh my God, that would be so dope if we could do this. And then all of a sudden we had funding and all of a sudden we have uh, help from administrators to get the club up and running. So it's, um, it's a really awesome club. Uh, it's not very, um, I guess for the new students coming in, it's not something that like requires a lot of, um, how would I call it? A lot of time to the club, you could say. Like we have a lot of members that just kind of show up for event nights. Um, and then we also have our more um, de developmental program in the esports program right now, where we do comp uh, competitions through several games and several teams uh, every year. And, you know, just try and do our best as a small university. 
So I think um, there's a lot to do on campus, which is really dope, um, especially club wise. And once you kind of like dip in your toes, you kind of just start going all in. That's awesome. And I remember when you started this club, just a small group of students getting together. And now yeah. <laughs> it's one of the featured events at orientation because it's so cool. Um, yeah, can definitely. you talk to us about the theme house aspect of Escape and how you have like a centralized home for all of your equipment? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the theme house for Escape is actually one of our ideas that we were like, okay, this would be really cool if it happened. And we had no expectation for it to work. Um, we thought that it would be really cool for um, the competitive teams that were going to be playing for our esports program to be able to live together as like um, professional esports teams do. However, it was a little bit unrealistic considering we had more than three teams at the time um, and each team had more than five players. So it was a little bit uh, too big of a goal. Uh, and we ended up just going with a theme house uh, through Escape, which is essentially a house that is owned by the university that uh, a club organization can create or ask the university to ha uh, be housed in and you essentially try and be part of this organization um and have a central location that you can like um be in with the club so for escape it, we don't do too many events we mostly a lot of people that stay in the theme house are usually board members for the escape club um, so that gives us a very centralized location where we can store equipment. Um, that's where we hold most of our meetings if we don't need like a big projector or something. Um, it's where we hold a lot of our talks about what we want to do for the future of the club. So just kind of like a place where we as friends can not only live, but also kind of be like, this is a club space that if people want to just come hang out, they can as long as they're, you know, friends of the uh, people living in the actual theme house. So yeah, it's, it's really, really dope. Thank you. So Josh, what motiv motivated you to join the CrossFit club and what types of activities does your club do on campus? So I joined the CrossFit club my freshman year, uh, which seems so long ago now. Um, and I, I would say uh, what really motivated me was I had been part of a sports team. And uh, for like my entire life, I was an ice hockey player. And um, unfortunately I, I had some injuries and I wasn't quite good enough to play in college um and so but I really missed that kind of team environment and I missed um and and you know obviously playing hockey a lot really kept you uh kept me in good shape and um so I think that's what initially drew, drew me to the CrossFit club is uh, instead of kind of working out by yourself um, you're working out next to a bunch of people who are going to motivate you and keep you consistent and keep you working hard. Um, I had, uh, I actually, funny enough, I met the uh, past president of the CrossFit Club my freshman year at the lake. I was down by the lake, and um, and when it's nice out, everybody kind of goes down there and hangs out. And I met him by the lake, and I was just like, hey, can I stop by? Um, and he was like, absolutely. So um, I think that's really different from a lot of uh, other people who usually kind of the involvement expo is huge uh, in figuring out what kind of club um, you're interested in. I would definitely recommend uh, going to the involvement expo because that's where we get most of our people. Um, and then kind of to go more into exactly what CrossFit is and what we do. Um, so CrossFit, uh, we run group classes pretty much every single day. Uh, but there's no commitment. So we have people who, you know, their schedule only allows them to come once or twice a week. And we also have people who come every single day um, to work out um, every single day of the week to work out. And we host group workouts um, that are pretty much um, can be done at any level of fitness or expertise. They involve um, running uh and a lot of uh cardio and biking and um weightlifting and some gymnastics but so we've had people actually we had an exchange student from china and an exchange student from germany uh who really had no experience working out at all before um who came into the club and um the the great thing is they can do the workout at the same time as people who've been you know, doing sports and CrossFit for years, uh, which is really awesome. So uh, we run group fitness classes every single day. And then 
we have had a few events in the past. We have had some competitions, uh, but that's not really the focus. We're, the biggest focus really is just trying to, um, you know, keep people active and keep people fit um, during college in a short amount of time because we're all so busy. Um, and then um, we, we also do an occasional like kind of informal movie night and, um, and that kind of thing. But the, yeah, the biggest thing we do is those, uh, those group classes and they're, they're open to anyone, which is, I think, really, really special. And all those group classes happen up at the rec center. So it's mm -hmm. really accessible. You'll see faculty, staff, and students at the classes that are offered. Awesome. Thanks, Josh. Yep. Could you all share with the students how you've managed your time being so involved on campus and also balancing your coursework and downtime? Uh, cool, I guess I'll go then. Um, the cool thing about the EMS club, uh, much like the Eastgate club, is we have our own house. Um, so a lot of the members will spend their downtime actually at the house uh, doing homework or studying together. A lot of us take the same classes. Um, so we, we kind of get that as a resource to help each other out and get through some of the more difficult classes. Um, furthermore, for downtime, uh, EMS becomes like your your community. And I think most of the other club leaders would agree with me that your particular club becomes sort of your group on campus. Um, I know some of my best friends are pretty much all of my best friends are within the EMS agency. Uh, so we're either hanging out at the house. Um, I usually had dinner every night there or at the uh, dining hall with members who are on duty um, just to see everybody. Uh, so definitely a lot of time within the club, but also outside of sort of the club parameters. Um, we'll go out, we'll go bowling together or we'll go see a movie or we'll go over to Rochester or something like that for a day just to hang out with one another. Yeah, I think um, adding on to that, I think something that's really cool is that once we, once we like started up the club again, especially last semester, we were all like, we're really busy, but this is really important to us. Like, how do we continue making it a part of our lives, especially because Model AU is really, it's, it's almost as like having another class just because you have to like do research and, and it's very academic in that way. And so what's really nice is that the professor who it like helps I forgot, the, like sponsor the club, <laughs> so something like that, um, was like, okay, well, maybe we should make this a half credit. So um, Professor Anir actually got Model AU to become half credit. So now all the work that we put into the club is also counted for in our academics. So that's also another incentive for students to join, um, knowing that it's not just, I mean, obviously you're passionate about the club and you're doing the work, but you can also get academic credit for it, which is really nice. And then with um, Sankova, just because a lot of people with our um, club meetings every week, sometimes people can't make it because they want to do homework or they have a test. Um, we actually started making our um, meetings bi-weekly and then on the off weeks, just having like a study with Sankofa time. So we um, at the IC um, just allow students to come in and you know, a lot of us who are upperclassmen like I'm an econ and you know, maybe one of the other co-presidents is in poli sci or bio. And so some of the underclassmen can come in during the study with Sankofa time and just ask us questions about our majors and minors or just like come and hang out and do homework with us. So these are sort of like ways that we've met, like managed to be like, all right, well, we're, we're students first, but we're still really excited about um, the clubs and our involvement on campus. Terrific, thank you. Um, so I know for me, time management was really weird, uh, just because with the creation of a club, there's, uh, definitely a lot of, um, thought process that you had to put in it, obviously. Um, it's a lot of planning that you didn't think you were going to have to do. Um, and that was really, really strange in terms for me, because I, I just never done that before. I'd always felt like I could be a leader in my communities. Um. However, it was never something that I was like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to go and try and create this and make this community. Uh, it was always joining a, a community for me. Um, so uh, finding that balance with work was a little bit of a little strange. And when our, our club first launched, I think um, it was definitely a odd thing transitioning into being a leader and also um, finding time for schoolwork, finding time to hang out with friends. Um, and also just kind of taking care of yourself, making sure you don't overdo it. Um, and I think for me, I figured it out mostly with the help of my club. Um, as a leader, I learned a lot about like 
making sure other people are doing stuff in the club. Uh, like my, our board members are really, really passionate about the club. Um, so when we have events on the once a month, it's like, okay, what is everyone doing? And it's never just like, well, what is one person doing? Um, and it definitely helps a lot uh, balance the workload, not only with the club, but also with homework. There's always times where like, okay, well, I have an essay due next week. I really can't be doing this for the club right now. Um, I really got, just got to hammer down on that. Uh, and that's completely okay, especially for me as the leader of the club. I always try and keep in mind uh, my board members are students first, um, and they're never going to be club members first. Um, and that's just kind of the way that university works. So I think um, your club leader should be keeping that in mind. Uh, and I think it's a really important thing to have. So, yeah. Great. Yeah. Good lessons learned. Yeah, definitely. So um, I think CrossFit actually has definitely helped to um, manage my time. I think I do a little bit better having some structure to my day and just knowing that um, every day I'm going to have to go, uh, or I don't have to, but every day I uh, usually will go to CrossFit. So I know that um, there are other times I need to get my work done has actually helped me. But uh, obviously sometimes you just have too much work and, uh, you know, this semester, like I have lab on a certain day and, and you know, sometimes getting out of lab you, and you have a lot of work. Um, it, it's really nice. I have a co-coach and um, I think next year we should have um, a couple of coaches as well. Um, and, and I should mention that uh, all the coaches uh, get certified, get um, through the CrossFit's L1 coaching program and the uh, school is awesome enough to uh, pay for that education as well. Um, and that can actually be used um, to get a job outside um, of school and to uh, to actually coach CrossFit outside of school. Um, I, I'm not doing that, but I know the other one of the coaches is uh, pursuing that path. And um, for our other members, I think it's great because we do have class so often. Um, I mean, I said right now we have it every weekday. And in the past, we've even had some uh, Saturday and Sunday classes. So since we have it so often, I think it really helps people who have a busy schedule to be like, oh, I can come on this day and this day I'm not as busy. Um, so yeah, I think um, that's really helped my time management and for other people, I think it could potentially do the same even if you have a really busy schedule. Great, thank you. So more broadly, what advice do you all have for students who are joining us on campus for the first time about getting involved and how to navigate that. Yeah, absolutely. So I think um, what's really cool that is hosted every year is the Involvement Expo, which you talked about a little bit earlier. Um, and so I know I, and along with many of my friends, go in and you know everyone's really excited. The club leaders are behind like their, their tables or they're trying to get people to sign up. So you sign up for way more than you can take on, which is so normal and everyone does it. So don't worry. And so then you're sort of like bombarded with emails and you're like, ah, I don't know, like I, I can't decide what I want to do and what I don't want to do. And and so I think definitely when you're going in, like sign up for as many as you want, do that. But in sort of deciphering what you want and like how you affect, how you envision it um, being in your schedule, just go, like just go to the first meeting, talk to the club leaders, email them beforehand. I think a lot of people are kind of like scared to put themselves out there when they haven't like been a part of the club for a really long time or they get intimidated with like the upperclassmen who are the leaders of the club and sort of like the really tight knit community that is fostered with just having a club and a community on campus. But like everyone, I mean, I can speak for, a lot of the club leaders that are out there, like everyone's so excited to recruit new members and just spread the passion that they have for the club to other people. So just reach out, um, especially ahead of time. If you can't come to the first club meeting, that's totally fine. Um, they'll probably meet up with you for coffee at ABP or something else. So I guess just put yourself out there um, and just like, don't be afraid to try a new thing, even if that wasn't like your thing in high school. Really good advice. And so often that's how students do get involved is they sign up for the email list of a club, but maybe then just dabble in what programs they can attend or what meetings they, you know, are available to go to. Just a reminder before we move on to the advice from um, our other student leaders is please drop those questions in the chat so that we can answer those next.
Um, yeah, just to kind of piggyback off that, I think that's really great advice. Um, and I think that's really exactly what you should do. You should go to the Involvement Expo. That's where most people find it. Sign up for as many as you can and then go try it out. Um, I think it's not, it's never going to hurt. And I think a lot of people are reluctant, like, um, you know, to come to, you know, something like CrossFit um, because they think, oh, uh, they've seen like videos of CrossFit and people doing crazy things and they think that's how it's going to be like. But then they come here and we are giving them these really basic exercises and we're really drilling the foundations in and it's really they realize that they can do it and it's not as hard as they think. Um, and they realize that we, we want them to pace themselves and make it fun and not just um, a brutal workout. So I think the best thing you can do is just go try it out um, and see if it's a good thing for you. Yeah, definitely kind of piggyback on um, um, some everyone else was saying. Uh, the Expo is a great, great, uh, it's probably one of the clubs is one of the club's biggest opportunities to really get to know uh, the incoming class. Um, another thing is when the first years have their um, their incoming night. I'm sorry, Kristen, do you, what, what was it called again? Oh, you mean the events, the late night events during yes, orientation? Yeah. yeah. So um, on orientation events, you're going to get a taste of what like, uh, club events are especially um, that will be like what a Friday night is like because a lot of clubs like doing events on Friday night people are finally done with the week they want to relax maybe have a good time um, especially for clubs that are uh, really about um, maybe like service or getting in uh, like community meetings um, but I think also uh, a lot of clubs will try tabling and saga which is a huge part of getting the word out um, just because they're just going to be sitting there literally hoping to have a conversation with you um, and kind of just try and let you know that like, hey, this club or this purpose or this group or this community exists on campus and we really want you to know about it and we would love for you to join if you're interested. Um, so I think tabling definitely has its like, it's up there with the expo. Great. Yeah, sort of echoing everybody. Um, I would say we're all, all the club leaders are very passionate about the organizations that they're in. Um, so if you maybe miss them at the club expo, uh, or maybe you can't make it for some reason, if you see somebody, I mean, for the EMS people, it's pretty obvious. We all wear our uniforms and we drive a car with lights and sirens on it. So we're pretty visible. <laughs> um, but if you see someone wearing a club organization shirt or something like that, I know it can be a little daunting, but go up and talk to them, ask them about the club. Um, if you're in the club, you want to talk about it and you, you want to share your experiences and share your enthusiasm and, and spread that around. So I would encourage if you see somebody wearing a shirt for an organization that you're interested in, definitely approach them and they'll be able to answer your questions and talk to you probably for hours about the organization. Wonderful. Well, we have had some questions come in through the chat, so I'll read those now. Um, looks like we have a question about, does the school have a Kiwanis Club? We do not currently have a Kiwanis Club. However, like you heard from the testimony of Dante related to starting a new club, it really is an easy process and our office is happy to work with you to prepare for your presentation uh, to get club status. There's also a lot of connections, especially for a service club like this through our Center for Community Engagement and Service Learning, uh, potentially to connect that club for sustainability and longevity of the club to a local organization too that you might be able to work with. So happy to entertain that once you arrive to campus. We have another question. Is there a list of clubs with descriptions that I can access prior to the expo? And yes, there definitely is. Um, so if you go to the HWS homepage and then navigate to the Student Activities Office, we have lots of tabs um, on our website, and one of them includes um, a list of all of our active clubs and organizations. Um, it's called Engage. It's a platform where all of our clubs actually have their own sort of homepage where they keep their roster, their finances, uh, descriptions about all of their clubs so that you can really get a sense of what the club is all about. And then you can also get some contact information to reach out to students if you have specific questions for them. So 
So great question, but you can definitely see our active clubs on our website. And if there's any other questions, feel free to go ahead and put those in the chat. In the meantime, though, I have a question for our student leaders. And that is, um, how has being involved in a club on campus impacted your HWS experience? And maybe what are the main takeaways, things that you've learned, things that you didn't think were gonna be part of your HWS experience? Um, so I think Eastgate for me personally has completely changed HWS for what it was, at least in my perspective. Um, I'm from LA. Uh, so it's a far, far, really far away from home for me. Um, and just kind of being on the other side of the country, uh, trying to go to this university that I had never heard before and was very excited to go to. However, I was very nervous about it. Um, I think kind of uh, putting this club and um, community into place uh, was instrumental to me, like, finding my group, uh, not only because I got to create it essentially, um, but also just because I really got to meet the rest of a lot of the gaming community on campus. I got to meet a ton of people uh, in like IT. I got to meet a, a lot of people in student activities and a bunch of other administrative offices that were like 100% willing to help and excited about starting this new club. Um, so I think that communities are definitely what you make of it, obviously. Um, but for me, Escape was this kind of like, I didn't find my community initially at HWS and Escape was a, an amazing place to kind of just create my own. Great. Yeah, very similarly. Um, I came into HWS not really knowing what I wanted to do both with my life and on campus. Um, so I didn't even think about leading a club or being chief or anything like that. And I, I sort of fell into the position just because I started doing EMS and really just kept dedicating my time to it because I actually enjoyed it. Um, and I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I was going to. Um, and from there, it's actually influenced my decision to uh, pursue PA school and, and go from there. Uh, so it's been incredibly instrumental in, in not only forming my experiences at HWS, both socially, academically, um, as well as just you have incredible experiences doing EMS regardless of where you do it, um, but also in my sort of uh, professional life and pursuing a uh, career within medicine that I previously thought I would never do. Um, yeah, piggybacking off of what everyone said, I think that's a great question because I didn't even, I think, realize how much it impacted me until um, I got older and had like a leadership experience within the club. What's really cool is that the, especially with Sankofa, it really connects you to webs of like faculty and professors and it you build a different relationship than you would have been, I guess, like just being a student in their classes. I remember we, Sankofa hosted a um, 400th anniversary of the first time that like slaves were brought to Western Georgia. And it was really cool that my history professor actually reached out to me at the end of the class and was like, hey, I know your co-president of Sankofa, I would love to collab with you to have this event. And I was like, well, oh, that's so cool that my professor is reaching out to me and like cares about what I think and what my club thinks and um, wants to collab with us to create this event. And so we got to actually team up with the history department to create that event and start on like all of the, sorry, I live in a city, so that's, <laughs> um, but all of the like planning and, and, you know, logistics that went into that, but then also just like talking to him and meeting with him about like how to plan the event and him asking me what I think, just having so much, I guess like, power and leadership in that way and being able to like mobilize my um, peers and create the event was really cool and taught me a lot about not just like leadership experience but about like putting legs to your activism in a really specific way and I think that just goes to the culture at HWS but also how small it is and how involved and and everyone there and especially the faculty really wants to see you succeed and I think that was the moment where I was like wow this is this is really cool that I'm a part of this um and then with MAU especially with Model African Union it's also really cool to just be a part of a community like everyone said but then also again just have that leadership experience and that like planning and logistic experience in a really specific way in a way that I think you can't really get at bigger um bigger schools so yeah
Yeah, CrossFit HWS has been a huge part of my time here at HWS. And um, I think just right off the bat, I've made so many friends. I think everybody will say they're so close to all the people in their club. It really gives you a community uh, of people that you can rely on and go to and that you're going to um, really spend a lot of time with. And uh, I will say, even now, even with... Uh, all of us being in quarantine, we're still doing workouts together over Zoom, which is uh, pretty funny. I think just it, they're going to be my my friends for uh, way, way longer than college is going to last. Um, and then just in terms of what I've learned, I think I learned a lot about leadership um, from uh, running across the HWS. I learned about um, just even things as like com a conflict management uh, in, in the club, there's always going to be people who disagree uh, and want to do things differently. And you have to figure out a way to work together and um, figure things out. I also learned a lot about communicating to people, uh, especially uh, when someone's trying to learn a new movement. Um, it's really difficult a lot of times to teach them. And it teaches you how to explain complex um, complex um, things in a in a way that people can understand. Uh, so I think it's really helped my communication skills and I just, um, I'm happy I have the opportunity to be able to, you know, help people with their fitness and um, and to stay healthy during um, their time at HWS. That's terrific. Well, thank you all for sharing your experiences with us today. I'm gonna remind all of our club leaders to Put their contact information in the chat if there, you have an Instagram, um, anything like that that you want to share with folks so they can reach out to you or follow you. That would be awesome. And that's all the time that we have for today. So again, I thank everyone who's joined us. Uh, we look forward to seeing all of you in the fall on campus back in action. Uh, so hopefully this helps you uh, understand what it's like to be a club leader on campus. And we look forward to having you all join us. So until then, have a great afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.